Step by step, we're working on the long martial arts staff. This is also known as the Japanese bow, Korean jong bong, the Chinese gunner cudgel. It's got a lot of different names in Silam Bomb. It's a long stick. We're gonna just turn it back and forth. Step one, it's a proper warm up. Get the blood to flow into your joints. Get everything lubed up. Strengthen the wrists, strengthen the forearms. After about 30 seconds in one hand, come over to the other hand. You're doing the same thing, just back and forth. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, especially at the warm up. If you have a heavy staff like this, this is a self defense protection staff. So this is very heavy. This hits very hard. So I'm gonna go a little bit slower. If your staff is much lighter, go faster. Eventually you'll be moving very fast no matter how heavy it is. After 30 seconds, you're gonna bring it from one hand over to the other hand, going side to side to increase the range of motion in the stretch. We're going overhead and behind the back in this instructional today. This is martial arts training at home for weapons or martial arts weapons training at home. Step by step. Step one is a good warm up. We're on the second step, which is going hand to hand, starting to pass the weapon from one hand to the other. Fighting with martial arts weapons means you'll become ambidextrous. You get really good using it in both hands. Hello, it's good to see you. Danielle, after this one, you're gonna take it to the side and you're gonna go back to step number one. But in this third step, you're going back and forth with your arm fully extended. Hello, Eli, or Ed, it's good to see you, Ed. Just over and back, stretching. And because it's in this plane of motion, you're gonna to start to really strengthen the shoulders, getting everything stronger here. After 30 seconds here, bring it over to that other side, extend it all the way, same thing. Now I'm gonna to start to lift the camera up because I want you to go overhead from the beginning today, at the beginning of this workout. This is martial arts weapons at home, martial arts weapons training at home, step by step. Step one is just a proper warm up. We're still kind of in that phase, but I want you to go over your head now. And at the very beginning, step number two is going hand to hand. Now you're gonna do that over your head. I want you to start to stretch those arms up. The key to not hitting yourself in the head when you go overhead is to extend your arms. A lot of times when you're hitting yourself, it's simply because your elbow is just here. If you get your arms straight, that won't happen. There's a weird psychological thing that happens when you first start, when if you don't see your hands, you're not used to it, you tend to keep them really close to your head. So if you can remind yourself, extend your arms all the way, it becomes less likely you're gonna smack yourself in the top of your head. After you do this for 30 seconds, you're gonna bring it back down in front of your body, and I'm gonna bring the camera down a little bit, because I want you to see this first two-handed spin, which is gonna be a butterfly spin. Just taking it over the top, the bottom hand opens up, the thumb slides up there. See how my palm is touching the back of the other hand? That's the key. Pull the hand in to you out of the way. Turn it all the way, reach in. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Take your time. It's just a butterfly in front of your body. After 30 seconds, going in one direction, stop that and go in the other direction. Same hand on top. This is my right hand. So I'm doing the butterfly spin. Right hand on top. And again, I'm going to go in both directions. And then I'm going to switch. So now my left hand is on top. And I just reverse everything. It's kind of hard if your watch is in the way. I'll just leave that on for right now and then stop that, go back the other way. So that's really four different spins on this next step in this martial arts weapons training at home, step by step. We're going one way, and then we're going the other way, and we're alternating, we're changing. You're gonna change which hand you have on top. So start with one hand on top, go the other way, that same hand on top, and then switch Put the other hand on top, and then go the other way. Let me slow way, way down one more time. There's the butterfly. Out of the way. This is my right hand turning all the way down. The left hand slides in. 
and takes it. The right hand is going to pull out of the way and slides up. Then we're going to go back up again. And I apologize, I don't have some fancy cameraman or camera device, I guess. But I'm just going to do that butterfly spin overhead. It's exact same butterfly. And again, I want you to go in both directions and switch which hand is on top. And this is really going to burn your shoulders out. If you haven't done it, especially if you're using a heavier staff like this one, this is good. This is forcing me to fight for it. See how my hands are? It's the same butterfly. I'm just in this plane up and overhead. And I want you to get really comfortable overhead. Oh good, everything's clear today. I did an update on the phone, I thought maybe that was it and it seems to have cleared up a lot. So from here, my hand is out to the side. I'm gonna come in and dip it in behind the back. The thumb's gonna be up, the other hand's gonna come under, and I'm gonna pull it out. So I start in one hand, bring it behind the back, and bring it out to the other side. This next step in this martial arts weapons training a home step by step is to get overhead and behind the back. Ed says, good for you, to, uh, assuming you mean it's clear. Everybody can see clearly today. We've been having some trouble with my live streams. Now I'm gonna lift it up and then complete that turn behind the back. Now look when I turn behind the back, you can see this is my right, right hand. My right thumb is just up. The left hand is just gonna come up under it and slide between my back and the staff, taking the staff and I'm gonna pull it out to the left, which is gonna be on that side. So from here, simply pull it out. Once you pull it out, you go straight up overhead. Now the second key to not hitting yourself in the head when you're going overhead is during the transition. A lot of times people hit themselves here if their elbow's bent or as they're coming down, they overturn and the second place they hit themselves is right here, hitting themselves at, because they're turning too much. And especially with a heavier staff, that's going to push past where you can control it at the beginning. And that's when you smack yourself in the head or sometimes in the in, inner thigh, when you start to do the figure eight. It's all because the staff is a little too heavy or your wrists aren't as strong as they need to be. So just slow everything down. But get rid of all of these extra spins here. Drop the arm. Take it, bring it out, and lift without the spin, and then do the spin overhead and do the spin behind your back. So you're going to start to go more quickly. And it's funny, I find myself a little bit more tentative with this heavy hickory staff because it hurts a lot more when I whack myself in the head. I've been using the rattan and that white oak, and I think my hard head is just hard enough the donuts don't hurt anymore, but this one's got a little bit of a bite, which is good. That's what I want because this is my self-defense staff. And I'm training with it these days because I'm going to get really comfortable with this heavy weight, moving it up and around my body so that when I'm ready to defend myself and bring down the basic strikes, I've got that strength. So that's just a, a pro tip. If you do have a heavy staff, work it in but go slow for a while and gradually speed up. And the heavier staff will be your self-defense staff and the lighter staffs will be your fancy spinning staff for competition or fun or for whatever reason you enjoy that. All right, so we've gone overhead, behind the back a few times. We're gonna go back over the head in a minute, but I want you to go over your hand and back. So you're gonna go over the pinky side or the small side of your hand, turning, and catching and then you're going to let it go all the way through this is the next step martial arts training at home step by step break it down slow it down and then you'll get it you can speed it up there's nothing you can't learn nothing you can't do if you just don't quit just keep moving in the direction you want to go and you'll get it same thing in the other hand one side the other one and if you want to see what this weighs i think this is about four or five pounds it's that first link below find it on that page it'll be under the bow b 
BO. So you speed it up. Speaking of BO, I had to change tops. That's why I'm wearing white. I tend to wear black. But I've worn all of them out. I have to soak them in the salt water pool and get the funk out for a couple days. That tends to do the trick. Go one way, go the other way. That's what I love about here in South Florida. Everything is hot, so you sweat more. Bring it over one side, bring it over the other side. These are simply wrist rolls. Now, a continuous wrist roll can be done by adding a thumb. I'm gonna pop that thumb in there, and then I'm gonna add a little pulling in motion toward me, and that allows it, that keeps the momentum going. That also allows me to keep my hand more in the middle of the staff. So I can continuously spin one way, and then I can continuously spin the other way. But spinning the other way is a different technique because I don't have the thumb in there and I can't move the pinky in the same way that I do the thumb. So what I do is when I get, get to about here, if I kept going, what would happen is I would have one really long side and one short side. When that happens to you, it falls, it drops, right? So if you instead allow it to slide, so the staff is going to slide along the back of my hand just enough so that I get the middle again. And so when you slow it down, you allow yourself, I'll try to back up so you can see what's happening. See how it's really long and short. So from here, I'd simply open the hand and let it slide back to where I want it. So from here, I'll do it a couple more times. Now that's really long, I simply open this hand and let it slide down. So that's the trick, that's the pro tip. You need to constantly find the middle when it gets there. Slow down, calm yourself enough so that you can grab it. Chris Mick says, just a great teacher. Thanks, I really appreciate that, Chris. Pop myself just a little bit. Sliding it in. And it's funny, I actually feel the muscles, the biceps, the triceps, the wrists, forearm with this heavier staff. I feel them getting a workout, especially when it comes to these Continuous spins. Now, after the continuous spin, I want to go back overhead and show you that other uh, way to go overhead that I talked about, which is a palm spin. So just like you're, you're uh, spinning a basketball on your palm or any kind of uh, round thing, or if you throw knives, if you spin knives, or if you spin other weapons like, like a palm stick, a yawara, or the Koreans have a the tongbong, which is like a short stick with a string on it. There are a lot of ways to spin. The fighting fan, one of my favorite weapons to use, the fighting fan you spin in your, your palm. But what you're gonna do, I'm gonna, I forgot that's why I put this on this tripod on the stand today, so I can bring it up. I'm gonna go overhead and I'm gonna open. Spins are just for straining. And yeah, exactly, Chris, you're right. The spins are not for fighting. It's to build power in your hands, your grip, your wrists, your forearm. And you're gonna find uh, people who, who are just purists, and they had a, a sensei, a martial arts instructor who told them never spin the staff. That is just baton twirling. Don't do it. No, they'll, be, they'll just be, oh cool, yeah, Father's Day I gotta write. No, Ed, start, start with what you have, use that. You can use that. Just go slowly at first, you'll catch up really fast. But, all these purists who don't understand, it's like people who say you can't fight with a nunchuck. They just don't understand how to fight with a nunchuck. They don't understand that there are different techniques. There are fancy techniques and there are fighting techniques. The fighting techniques of the nunchuck are very effective. It's not just a fanciful weapon. It's not just a movie weapon. It's a real weapon. And if you know how to use it, you understand that. Same thing with spinning a staff. Spinning a staff is just to build proprioception, spatial awareness, timing and distance, um, condition the body, condition the hands, condition the muscle, just like a boxer jumping rope or punching a bag. You don't punch the bag when you go into the ring. You don't punch or bring a jump rope into the ring. Let me see if I can show you a different angle. So all I'm doing is I'm just turning my wrist. 
Once I get a little momentum there, I open the hand. Try not to break the camera. So from here, just open, and you can bring it back one way. You can try to go for two spins. Try to challenge yourself. Go from two to three to four to five. Just up over the head. That'll give you one more way to move your staff when you start to do freestyle. Now, speaking of freestyle, I want to go into a single hand, how to use the staff with one hand. We're going to do this figure eight motion, and I'm just simply carving a sideways figure eight or infinity sign. I'm going to do that to the front of my body, and then I want to bring my staff out to the side and do it to the side. But spinning the staff is not fighting. Fighting is fighting. Fighting, you stand behind it. You take it with two hands. You wait. You tell them to back up. They get too close, thrust, right? Strike, strike, strike. But there's no spin. The spin has just created great strength and great cardiovascular fitness and all the other things like a jumping a rope does. All right, on the figure eight, we're going to the front and then to the side. You're gonna do 30 seconds in each direction and the other hand to the front. This is a forward rotation and then out to the side and then put it back in the first hand and pull with the pinky, just carve it up and bring it around in the other direction. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, take your time, pulling, pull your stomach up and in, bring your feet up under your body and do the same thing to the front and the back of your body. It's exact same spin, just a different plane. Put in the other hand, pulling to the front and the back of your body. Do it to the front of your body, side to side. Then once you've done a figure eight in both directions, or both hands and in both directions, forward and reverse, I want you to add those wrist rolls in to that figure eight. So you're doing a figure eight, figure eight. Also, if you want to, if you want to do Selambam style, the Indian style, bring the hands together, turn your whole body. This motion is the exact same as this motion. I want you to see that. Put the other hand on, same motion. Bring the other hand back, same motion. In fact, you can practice this, challenge yourself. With two hands, you're gonna pivot a lot, a lot faster. It's gonna go a lot faster. So you're gonna go slowly back into figure eight to figure eight. And then when you're ready, put in the other hand, figure eight to a wrist roll, figure eight to a wrist roll. And then reverse it and do a reverse figure eight, but then continue to do wrist rolls. So see that you can do the wrist roll both in the forward spin and in the reverse spin on either side. You can also do that to the front and the back of your body. But when you do that, something fun is gonna happen in your brain. You're gonna feel it too, I promise you. You're gonna feel like a tickle in your brain as more neural pathways, when you go to this front and back of the body, it's going to start to, um, <laughs> some of them, I've got this one, it's got its own, like its own brain in there, that, that middle knuckle. That's, that was being stupid and punching things I shouldn't have way too many times when I was younger. But sometimes you learn the hard way, right? My instructor used to tell me I had a head like a rock. You had to hit it to get through to me. And it's true, I did have that hard head as a young man. Martial arts saved my life. That's why I've been doing martial arts since I was a little kid. It's the only thing that's kept me in the game, like sane and focused and, and content and, and finding new ways to live. But if you, when you do this to the front and the back, it's, I feel it every time. I don't think it's just like the placebo effect or whatever, but you fire new neural pathways in your brain. And if you know anything about brain elasticity or plasticity and, and aging, it makes you younger, keeps you younger. If you study uh, languages, if you do math, if you like science, it's gonna make you better at all those things. It's gonna keep you from aging yourself too fast. And all that flexibility turns into uh, a better, better quality of life, right? Because when you get old and you get inflexible in your thinking, you're pissed off all the time, you're angry all the time, everything makes you mad, that's a problem. But that happens, we know that happens, especially if you have older relatives, or if you're older yourself and you have older peers. The ones who get inflexible up here 
are the ones who are afraid of everything and stop trying anything and are quick to judge everything. Where if you can increase plasticity in your body, flexibility is another way to say it, then that flexibility comes back into your thinking and your quality of life goes up. Now, from here, I want you to see that you can do like side to side, right? Do that wrist roll and that wrist roll, but then you can whip it up overhead and you can do a wrist roll overhead. It's the same thing. And you bring it back into here and here, bring it here, bring it up. Try not to hit other things in the room and then challenge yourself and do the same thing in the other side and see if you can't do that. Um, plasticity means like flexible. So plasticity just meaning that you're not so inflexible that your brain breaks with any kind of new idea or concept. That you get so angry and you think you're the only person who knows anything. And everybody around you just shakes their head and thinks, man, he's a grumpy old dude. She's a grumpy old lady. Um, you know, or they can't tell you anything because you won't listen. That's what I mean by being plastic. Anyway, buying Storm API at Lifetime, yeah, that'll help you, the hood for sure. <laughs> that'll fix it. That'll put you back to square one, but in a good way. All right, last thing, you're gonna bring this around, bring this over here. Bones are, are very flexible. So you have to have bones, bones if your bones, Uh, I understand your, your attempt to criticize and demean. Keep going. It's fine. Go for it, brother. But, um, but you're right. You can't get rid of bones. Bones are plastic. Bones are very flexible. In fact, they flex until they snap, just like wood. You're bringing it through your fingers one way. And then, and if they're not, you've got some brittle old bones. You're in for some tough troubles. Sometimes snowflakes are, um, yeah, they, 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 don't, they don't break when they bend. They bend and then they break. Right before they break, they're bend. They bend. They're plastic. Meaning that they're not made out of the material plastic that comes from oil, meaning that they're flexible. So you're bringing this around. around and around and around. Don't think of plastic in the term that, you know, like a plastic cup. Think of the term plastic and then as a scientific uh, description of its quality, meaning that it's flexible. Yeah, rubber is too, too flexible, but something in the middle, right? All right, so bring it around the fingers, get those going, that's gonna build your strength. <laughs> Just let them go, let them go. All right, but th thanks, Chris, for, for trying to uh, correct them. But some people, they don't want to be corrected. They just want to be a keyboard warrior and throw shade or throw poo from at home. The funny thing is you're sitting there in your mom's basement and you're throwing poo at the screen and it just bounces and you're smelling it because it doesn't go through. It doesn't work like that. Anyway, thanks, Ed. I will, um, I'll talk to you guys later. I'll see you